Shalom and welcome to this week's Bible study. Uh, this week we'll be studying about uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 where the Bible says uh, in everything give thanks. So we'll be looking at that and seeing what that means and looking about being thankful and thankfulness. Um, and so we'll go ahead and pray and then get into the lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the day and for your word and all your blessings. And we pray that you'll help us today to uh, study your word and learn from it. And thank you for your blessings in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, uh, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, if you notice, it says uh, that we're supposed to give thanks in everything, not for everything. So, like, if you go through trials and stuff, you know, um, you, you don't have to be thankful for the trial. But we are thankful in the trial. Like, even when we're going through that, you know, we don't get angry and get mad at God. We'll still, we still have a heart of thankfulness and gratitude um, that God is still with us. And he's still helping us and providing for us. And, you know, just like Job, when uh, everything fell apart for him, the, you know, the only thing he said until his friends started trying to tell him how bad he was, and then he started defending himself, and then he did get a little proud, so God rebuked him for that. But until then, the only thing that ever came out of Job's mouth was nothing but praise for God. He said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay, so this is talking about an attitude like that that we are supposed to have no matter what happens, we have an attitude of thankfulness to God, and we don't get angry with Him. We don't get mad and holler at Him. Um, most of us are not as strong as Job, and we fall and mess up and get mad at God. I have been guilty of that myself, and um, that is something in the last few years that I have really walked on and tried to really, you know, just trust Him more and not get upset and um, just trust him that he's going to walk everything out and he always walks everything out and so you know God's goodness and mercy teaches us to trust him and helps us to change and um so but that's what that means we're supposed to give thanks in everything not for everything you know like um as you all know I had a serious illness for 15 years uh because I had been poisoned with mercury twice for being a Christian, and honestly, you know, I've never understood it when people stand up and say, oh, I'm so thankful that I went through this trial and all this, because I'm sitting there going, I'm not thankful that I went through the trial. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not thankful that I went through the trial. I am thankful that God brought me out of it, that he was with me in it, uh, that he preserved me through it, um, but I am not thankful for the trial i am not thankful that i was poisoned um you know i'm not necessarily thankful for the trial itself i'm thankful that god was faithful and he stayed with me and he helped me through it so we we're thankful in everything um we don't have to be thankful for everything um and uh so you know when things are going wrong and stuff you know we just we're, we're to be thankful in those things and and you know sometimes life can get so bad where we're like well i don't uh know if i got anything to be thankful for but as christians we can always be thankful for one thing and that is this earth is the closest to hell we will ever get so if you are going through a time of really hard trials just remember thank god you're never going to go to hell okay because if you're saved if you're truly saved if you're a true christian you know you can't go to hell um so just you know keep your eyes on jesus and be thankful for that and and plus you can't ever lose the holy spirit nothing can separate you from the love of god there's all kinds of spiritual blessings maybe the physical is really bad and really hard but there's all kinds of spiritual blessings that we can still be rich in and we can still be thankful for and those are the things that you know in those times that's what we need to focus on um and then um you know, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and we're supposed to be thankful to God. And Psalms 100, verses 4 through 5 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. See, he's good, and he's merciful. He saved us. He died for us. You know, we don't have to go to hell, and even when we have trials and stuff, he's there with us. Jesus promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us, 
And that is a new promise for the Old Te- for the New Testament because back in the Old Testament he did lead people. Um, sometimes he did. Uh, I have found that sometimes he did actually indwell people. He would come upon people. Or he would actually indwell people in the Old Testament. But he could also leave them in the Old Testament. He didn't always stay with them. And it wasn't just because they sinned. Bible says that King Asa, God, the Spirit of God, left him in order to test him, and he fell. Now, what he, what God was doing was he was doing the same test that happened with Job, although it was the devil's idea with Job, and the devil tormented Job through that. But you know, the Book of Job doesn't say that the Holy Spirit was, or you know, was there at all to help Job, and he actually stood on his own two feet. He was a very strong man. Uh, most of us aren't that strong. Most most people are not. I mean, Job was the exception, not the rule. And everybody should. And I try and try to be more and more like Job. And everybody should try to be to strive to be like Job. And a lot of people don't like it when I bring out. You know, Job didn't sin. Job didn't ever. You know, he he was righteous and he was good. And the only thing he did was he got a little bit proud at defending himself against his terrible friends who were really trying to tear him down and being really obnoxious and mean to him. Um, but, you know, he didn't get angry with God, he didn't shake his fist at God, he didn't curse God and die, you know, he didn't, um, uh, you know, he didn't have problems with immoral sins, he never tried to commit adultery or anything, um, he didn't have these things, and, you know, he also did not have hardly any of the, he didn't have any of the Bible, he, um, he might have had some oral traditions, concerning the book of Genesis, um, and, but that's it. Pro- not even the whole book, probably just parts of the book of Genesis, um, because Job was before Abraham. Um, so it was like, you know, he didn't, he almost didn't have any of the Bible, um, and he probably just had maybe the first ten, six, seven chapters through the flood. That's about all he knew. Um, so he didn't have hardly have any of the Bible. He did not have the Holy Spirit like we do. Um, in the book of Job, when he was going through his trial, there is no indication that the Holy Spirit helped him at all, that it looked like God totally left him. There's no mention of the Holy Spirit in the book of Job. Um, then you have, and I believe that when because God tested King Asa hundreds of years later by leaving him, by the Spirit of God leaving him, I believe that that is a... You know, you can take that and look back at Job and say, well, that's what he did with Job. Job stood, Asa fell. Um, as most people would fail, we would probably fail if he did that to us. That's why now that we have salvation and Jesus has come and we have that gift of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit, well, the Holy Spirit not only indwells us, he is sealed in us. He can't get out. And Jesus promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So uh, we have, we can be thankful that in everything, nothing can separate us from the love of God. And Jesus will never leave us. God will never leave us like he left Asa and like he left Job. We don't have to face trials on our own. We have Jesus with us all the time. So, you know, we can be thankful for that. And we can be patient with God and trust him through our trials. Um, and then, you know, praising God is very important. It's, a, it's actually commanded in Psalms 150. The whole psalm is about praising the Lord. It says, Praise you, the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. So, you know, we're commanded to praise the Lord. Um, and, you know, and we're to thank him on all things. We're supposed to praise him for his goodness. And we're supposed to sing songs and praise him. You know, these are all commands. And um, and we're supposed to do this stuff all the time, not just one day a year. But, you know, we set aside one day to be thankful to God. And that's a good thing to do. And, um, but we ought to be in like a continual attitude of this, an attitude of gratitude, as the saying goes. And, um, also the Bible does, now Thanksgiving can be a sacrifice, meaning it can be, um, you know, it can be kind of hard to do sometimes, especially if you're going through stuff. Um, but it, but there is, you know, there is a sacrifice of Thanksgiving sometimes. So Psalms 
107, 21 through 22 says, Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. So sometimes thanksgiving can be a sacrifice because it's like, well, we don't feel like being thankful. We're going through all this stuff and all of our circumstances are terrible, you know, and, you know, uh, everything's falling apart and we may not feel like being thankful, but we still have that command and then it's, a sacrifice of thanksgiving and god is pleased with that and um now you know tomorrow is thanksgiving and some people they don't celebrate thanksgiving for different reasons and you know um it's not unbiblical to not celebrate thanksgiving as long as you're still thankful to god for things you know actually celebrating that day that's not unbiblical because the bible does say that one man esteemeth one day above another another esteemeth every day alike that every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So, you know, if, um, you know, some people, you know, they have, um, like, personal reasons, or some people even have religious reasons for not celebrating Thanksgiving. Um, but uh, we celebrate it as a day of thankfulness to God, and, um, you know, some people don't celebrate it because they don't understand the history properly. It's been taught wrong. Um, they think that Thanksgiving is some kind of a bad day, and the pilgrims were, I guess they think that the pilgrims were oppressive to the natives. And But um, if you go look at real history and not the junk that the atheists have been trying to shove down our throats for the last hundred years, you know, the true history is the pilgrims, most of them were Puritans, especially the leaders. Um, the Mayflower Compact, if you go read that, it absolutely says that, you know, the one of the reasons, the reason for coming over here and doing the colony was to give glory to God and for the furtherance of the Christian faith, which means that they came over here specifically to reach to the natives for Christ. Um, you know, and there were some problems. They, you know, the, and you know, there was uh, not all the pilgrims were Christians. You had, uh, you know, there were soldiers and people who were kind of trigger happy and stuff, and and you know, the Puritan leadership was having to try to make peace, and they were finally able to make peace, and there was a some shooting and stuff, and one of the natives got shot, but then the Puritans took him in and, and nursed his, of his wounds and prayed for him, and he was healed and recovered, and they were able to finally make peace, so there were some problems, like, you know, the devil will always throw in problems when you're trying to serve God and do good, um, but they were able to make peace, and then the, you know, the first Thanksgiving was because, like, most of the Puritans died the first year because they came over really late, in the year, you know, they, you know, just look at that part of the country, even today, I mean, they have harsh winters, you don't want to be, could you imagine, like, going to Plymouth, even in today, with today's climate and stuff, you end up in Plymouth, and, like, did they show up in, like, oh, man, I can't remember what month they showed up in, I think it was, like, October, like, September, October, it was really late in the year, they only had a few weeks till the bad winter storm started hitting, and they could not prepare for the winter properly. So, like, a lot of the Puritans died that first winter. And then, so the next year, you know, Squanto showed up and helped them and taught them how to grow food in this land because it was different um, than England. And, uh, you know, they had to teach them how to grow food here. And then they had a bountiful harvest. And so... They gathered together that first Thanksgiving for seven days, not just one day, to thank God for sparing their lives, number one, uh, because they didn't all die out. And then uh, to thank God that this next winter would be much better because they had a bountiful harvest. And then they actually invited the Native Americans to join them in the feast because they were thanking the Native Americans for helping them learn how to survive because... They all would have died the next winter if the natives had taught them how to grow food here. Um, so, uh, it's, you know, it's, Thanksgiving is not about all the bad stuff that happened hundreds of years later where, you know, the land was stolen from the Indians and they were deceived and they were, uh, you know, move, they were, like, moved around and oppressed and all that happened hundreds of years later. And I'd have to check the history, but I'm not too sure that even any of the direct descendants of the Puritans ordered any of those oppressions and that stuff. Um, that could have been other people who came in later. Um, 
I, I, I want to check that out and find out. But, you know, after 207 years, descendants of godly people can become evil. So, I mean, just look at the last 200 years. Okay. You, you give people a couple hundred years, you know, the generations can go sour. And so, even if some of them that ordered the aversive step was descended from the Puritans, it wasn't, you know, it had been 200 years, so, you know, people fall away from God. And, um,. And by the time the country was being founded, there was, you know, there, there was some falling away. I mean, Benjamin Rush was one of the founders, and he actually wrote a paper concerning the public school system at the time of the revolution. And he was concerned that our public school system at the time of the revolution was beginning to fall away from God because they were not holding the Bible as in high esteem for their textbook. He wrote, a, he wrote a wonderful paper on that, which um, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's a paper by Dr. Benjamin Rush concerning education in America. And it, when I read that, it sounded like somebody today wrote it. I mean, I was sitting there going, this, this was at the revolution? Okay. Um, so, you know, there was some falling away already being done um, by the time the revolution happened. But at the very beginning with the pilgrims, that was 200 years before any of that bad stuff started coming in. So, you know, everybody, you know, should, you know, want to, um, you know, the, there's not really a historical reason to not celebrate Thanksgiving if you truly understand the history of it. Um, and uh, there's some places where you can get true history. The atheists have come in and changed our history so much and uh, really messed it up. But um, if you go, like, uh, there's some organizations like the Heritage Foundation, Wall Builders. Um, if you, uh, there's a uh, playlist that I, like, gathered videos together from uh, a YouTube channel. Uh, another YouTube channel, I put it into a playlist and just showed it on my channel. I didn't upload them, I just showed, showed the videos on my channel. And um, it is the American Heritage series and then the sequel to that. Uh, that David Barton did with War Builders, and it goes through and it tells true American history, and he has got like documents and letters and writings of the founders, and it's really interesting. And I think in that they do talk about the first Thanksgiving and stuff, and you'll get some better history on that. So I mean, if you want to go read some true history and, and go learn some true history, you can watch those videos. I will actually link that this week. Uh, on this video, um, and that is, I mean, I encourage you to have your children watch it, um, you should watch it first, because I'm not, uh, I spent a long time since I've watched them, and I don't know if everything in it would be suitable, I think you'd have to go age appropriateness for some of them, um, but if the parents watch them, and then decide which ones the children should watch, um, that's best, and, uh, so, yeah, you know, you can go look at that and it tells the, you know, the true history. And, and they go through and explain how different things the atheists brought in lies and how they corrupted different things, too. It's really interesting. Um, but, you know, Thanksgiving is simply a day that we set aside to thank God for his blessings. And if you don't want to celebrate it because, you know, you, maybe you don't have family around or you just don't celebrate holidays. Some people just don't like the fuss of holidays and they don't want to celebrate them uh that's fine as long as you're thankful you still have that daily attitude of gratitude and being thankful to god you know god says that we can we don't have to observe days if we want don't want to um but i think it is important for every american to understand true history and and not get confused and caught up in the lies of the atheists who are trying to discredit america's godly founding and heritage um, and, you know, uh, and so, you know, it, it's important to be thankful and, um, uh, we're commanded to be thankful to God and, you know, we be thankful to God in all things, not necessarily for all things. And so that is the lesson for today. And I'll also, um, I also, there's also a video online that I found last year and put up, um, for children, that's a pretty good video on the uh, first Thanksgiving, and I'm going. To, I'll try to find that and link that 
at the end of this video too and so that gives your kids something to watch um that explains thanksgiving and um well uh happy thanksgiving uh to everyone that celebrates it and i hope you have a wonderful week and um just remember to be thank to you know don't lose sight of the truth be truly thankful to god and then of course you know the black friday and everything afterwards you know don't get you know keep that attitude of being a christian and thankful and don't go to the store and get in a fight with somebody over some you know don't don't be covetous you know um sometimes my family and i will go like later in the day or the next day afterwards and kind of look and see if there's any kind of discounted things that we would want or need and try to save some money that way but we don't like get it stay out there from midnight and stay out all night and then get fist fights with people trying to get stuff i mean that's not christian like and you know you're celebrating thanksgiving tomorrow and then the next day you go out and act like a heathen um that's not really christ honoring so remember in all things you know being thankful is not just lip service it's not just words but it's a lifestyle so in all things we ought to live a life of gratitude and thankfulness and covetousness is the opposite of that so all conduct needs to show that we are thankful we have gratitude we are content um if you want to go catch some sales or something that's fine just act like a christian okay don't you know don't um don't act like a heathen <laughs> Don't get in a fight with somebody, you know, as the Bible says, you know, take the loss. If, if it's rightfully yours and they take it, just act like a Christian and say, Jesus loves you. You can have it. Merry Christmas, you know, or, or happy holidays or whatever. Um, uh, yeah, because, you know, I have, I've heard of that and seen that. And, you know, these people say they're Christians. They're, they're going to celebrate Thanksgiving tomorrow and the next day they're going to go, man, they're going to go beat the crowds and get in a fight with somebody to get their TV. <laughs> or the computer um yeah um that that's that's not christ honoring so you know if you go on black friday act like a christian and be nice um live a life of gratitude it's more than just saying thank you to god it's a lifestyle it's where we show we live a life of gratitude and and we are humble and we take that back seat and we are giving and we let others have things even if they're rude and obnoxious um which happens because the world is ungodly and not thankful and covetous and selfish and we're supposed to be the total opposite of that even in our actions and so um so uh well um that's the whole lesson for today so just you know be thankful live a life of thanksgiving not just saying words on especially not just one day a year um and uh and so we'll go ahead and close and i will let's see i lost my um okay okay and so i'll go ahead and we'll close in prayer and then i'll do the ironic blessing over you and uh in uh, Hebrew and then in English and um, so we'll go ahead and close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. We pray that you will bless us this week and help us and help us to be truly thankful and not just give you lip service of thankfulness but to actually live a life of thankfulness and gratitude and to be thankful in all things and to trust you in all things and we thank you for your blessings and we pray that uh, you'll keep us all safe this weekend. In Christ Jesus name, Amen. Ya Rebekah Adonai Vayis Mereka Ya El Adonai Panav Eleka Viku Neka Yisa Adonai Panav Eleka Vesim Laka Shalom I got a tick on my throat. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Thank you so much for watching this week. And please come back next week for another Bible study. And um, uh, thank you for everyone that likes and shares the videos. And um, that really helps our channel. And, uh, uh, you know, if God lays it on your heart to support our ministry so that we can have more resources to reach more people for Christ, 
please use the Patreon or PayPal links in the description. Thank you and have a very blessed weekend. Uh, have a blessed Thanksgiving. Bye.